welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 176. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Magic Trick 175 to 184. Hey, in this video, we want to get the last number from multiple columns on a different sheet. So here it is. We have four cells. And if we go over to the sheet named items, there's a column with a field name at the top. And there's always uh, different amounts of data. But we, we want the last value. So we want 19, 19, 34, and 24. So let's see the formula for that. Equals lookup. And the lookup value is going to be a gigantic number. Uh, and that way, with the way lookup is programmed, if we have it look through that whole column and give it a ridiculously big number, the lookup will go through the whole column. And when it finds the last value that's still not equal to or bigger than the value it's looking for, it'll return that last value. So the big value we're going to use is big num. Now I have this stored in uh, memory. And if I uh, double click that and hit F9, it will evaluate. And that this is um, the biggest number that Excel can deal with. Now, sometimes it's overkill. Um, but um, nevertheless, that is ex the biggest number Excel can uh, deal with. So you have no problem there if you put that in. If you really never go over 100, then you could put in 100, right? And it would still find it. Now, let's just click on this item sheet. Click on the column right there, and you can see the form formula evolving up there. And now we'll hit Enter. And if we look here, there it is. It's going to look for this ridiculously big number in every single time. It's never going to find it, so we'll always return the last value. And then we can just copy this over. And sure enough, 19, 19, 34, 24, if we check that. Now, what happens if you have um, words, or you want to return anything at all? a word, a number, uh, a true, false, an error, whatever it is. Well, we're going to have to use a different formula. Let's go back over here. We'll use the offset function equals offset. Now, offset has five arguments. We're only going to use the first three. We're going to use offset to simply return the value from one cell. We'll ignore the last two arguments that help to find a range. We just want to start at a starting point and then go down a certain number of rows. We have to click on items. And the place we're going to start is F1. So it says offset items explanation point. That explanation point means sheet reference. And then F1, comma. And I'm going to build this formula up here. Now we need to figure out how many rows we need to go down. Well, we're going to uh, do an array here. We'll do max. Max of what? Row. Row. And we'll highlight this whole row. Close parentheses. So for right now, if we were to evaluate that, it, it wouldn't let us do it if we hit F9, because it would give us um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 65,536. But we want to multiply that by in parentheses, this whole column, and then the symbol for not less than, greater than. I'm going to pull this down right here. Less, uh, uh, less than, greater than means not. And then we're going to put blank, which is double quote, double quote. Close parentheses. So this will give us uh, a bunch of numbers, right? The rows. And this will give us a bunch of true falses. Well, the very last cell that has a blank will say true. When multiplied times the row, it'll give us that row number. And then because there's a bunch of cells that are uh, not blank, the max will pick the biggest one. And that's very cool because in this second argument of offset, it says how far down from the starting point do you want to go? Well, there's a problem because we're starting in cell 1, so we have to have to subtract 1 here to accommodate that we actually um, are starting from the very first cell. Now, we type comma. Oops, I forgot to put a close. That's what's so great about screen tips here. This screen tip is, is sitting there because I forgot to put a close parenthesis. As soon as I put a close parenthesis, then it changes back to offset. Now I put a comma here, and it's expecting columns. I'm going to put 0 because we don't want to move uh, any columns at all. Close parenthesis, and now we have to Control-Shift-Enter. 
And sure enough, when we copy it over, that formula will work. Now let's take a look. There it is. Um, offset, there's the position, there's that max of the rows and the non-blanks, trues and falses. It finally gets the row and moves that far down. Subtract 1, and that gives us our uh, anything that's at the bottom of this column, Control-Shift-Enter. Now, another uh, great trick, instead of doing it just on one sheet, this one we're going to get the last number from a column across multiple sheets. So here it is, January, there's some sales. So in January we have um, a column of sales. February, we have a column of sales. And finally, March, what's the keyboard shortcut to go back to cell A1, Control Home? So, and look, we're going to also need to accommodate blanks. So our goal over here back on 176 is to have one formula that will get the last number in column A from multiple sheets. Well, the first trick is notice January, February, March. January, February, March. So we have the sheet names up here. We're going to use that same lookup with a big number. And uh, there's that big number again. Again, you don't have to use this. But it is the biggest number that Excel knows how to deal with. So we have the, the value we're looking up right here is this big number. And we just need to, for our array, have column, a column here. But wait a second. We need to some, because January, February, March are all column A, which is A colon A explanation point. But what we need is to get this value from here. Well, the way you do it is you use the indirect function, indirect. Indirect. And what it will do is it will take our constructed cell reference as text and convert it back to a cell reference. So watch this. I'm going to click right there. And then what do we need? For it to be a sheet reference, it needs an explanation point, and then A colon A. So I'm going to ampersand in uh, double quote, explanation point, A colon A, end quote. Close parentheses on the indirect. So that right now, if we were to highlight this, Remember, oh, let's highlight this part right here and hit our F9 key to evaluate. You can see that is a sheet reference looking through column A. I'm going to control Z. And if I do F9 again, you see how it's in quotes? That's because Excel thinks it's uh, text, and it will not uh, use uh, text as a cell reference, control Z. So that's where the indirect comes in, because it'll convert that text back to a cell reference when I hit F9. Oh, it's too long. So we're uh, not going to do that. Yes, because it's uh, it's gigantic. Uh, there's the 8,000. You see, when we did that, it told us how many characters are allowed in the new Excel. 8,192, that's it. So it didn't let us do that. I'm going to close parentheses and then uh, just enter or control enter and then copy it over. So that will get um, the, the 43, the 12, and the 15 from sheet January, February, March. Let's go look. January. February uh, is 12, and March is 15. So that's uh, how to do it uh, across multiple sheets. And then up here, we saw how to do uh, last number in a column and last thing in a column. All right, we'll see you next trick.